The St. Louis Cardinals are finding their way closer to first place. This week in a set against the Chicago Cubs at Busch Stadium on Tuesday, St. Louis passed the Cubs in the standings for second on a 1-0 win. Daryl Porter's RBI single in the second was enough as Joaquin Andahar got his first win of the year to beat the surprising Chicago Cubs and Ferguson Jenkins. Joaquin went eight and a third innings, five hits, two run, or two walks, and four strikeouts in the shutout. Bruce Suter picked up his sixth A. Fergie Jenkins, if the Cubs are going to surprise this year in the National League East, seven innings but took the hard luck loss. One earned run, seven hits, three walks, and two strikeouts. He's three and three. The Cubs are falling back. The Expos and Cardinals are a game and a half apart. The Cardinals look for a third straight win over the Cubs next. On Retro Sports Network, Saturday, or Wednesday, baseball lunch replay. Well, it's the two MLB lunch replay for this Tuesday. Playing the games of May 5th, 1982. And today, it's the Chicago Cubs and St. Louis Cardinals. Doug Berry pitches for the Cubs, and Andy Rincon goes for the Cardinals. On a wet, rainy afternoon here in St. Louis. These two teams are playing a rare all-day game for St. Louis. Midweek series, which is kind of strange if you ask me, but I didn't make the schedule for 1982. So these Cubs... With the surprise of the National League East coming in, they're still 14 and 11. They're two games behind Montreal, but they've been passed in the standings now by the Cardinals, which is what we expected. The Cubs really should go nowhere. They're 14 and 11. The Cardinals are coming on. They still don't even have Willie McGee yet, and they're still 16 and 10. So, 77 degrees, a little bit of wind, no one in a strange position in right field or left field or any of that. And so the Cardinals now have to worry about the Expos. They're on the right track. They struggled the first couple of weeks of the year. They're now 16-10, and 10, and they're looking right as they now head into the heart of their National League East schedule. And so as you look at a morning shot of St. Louis, we can tell you that Andy Rincon is on the mound for St. Louis. Andy 2-0 and on the year. With a 3.25 ERA, in his last start against Cincinnati, he went six and two thirds innings. As my nose itches, six hits, four runs, all earned. He walked five and struck out three. He is not. He's allowed one home run, and he is allowed 27 and two thirds innings. He's pitched 27 and two thirds innings. 19 hits, one home run. 10 runs all learned. He walked 15 and struck out 8. And so the Cardinals are looking for their third straight against the Cubs. How you doing, Mr. Red Sox fan? Good to have you along. So here is the lineup that Andy will face. Bump Willis. Bump Wills, the second baseman, will lead off for Chicago. Junior Kennedy is a shortstop. He'll bat second. Billy Buckner is at first. He'll bat third. Keith Moreland is the third baseman. He'll bat fourth. Leon Durham, the right fielder, will bat fifth. Woods, the center fielder, will bat sixth. Steve Henderson, the left fielder, will hit seventh. Jody Davis, the catcher, will bat eighth. You can see some of the key players already in the lineup for the Cubs when they would make a run in 84. And Doug Bird on the mound for Chicago. Defensively around Rincon, Dean Orge is in left. He's a six and a two. Lonnie Smith is in center. He's a three and a six. I forget when Willie McGee would come over from St. Louis or to St. Louis, but it made all the difference in the world for the Cardinals. George Hendrick is in right. He's a five and a six. Ken Overt fell as a six at third, so the third baseman's already there. Ozzie Smith. Am I streaming? Yeah. Ozzie Smith is a ten, of course. It's short. Tommy Herr, a six at second, and Keith Hernandez is a ten at first. With Daryl Porter behind the plate. 
let me move another window around and then we'll get going. Come on. All right, so with all that out of the way, when Cone is ready, as I said, it is raining here in St. Louis, 77 degrees, not much rain, but this carpet's going to get wet, and the automatic tarp on the machine has had the field covered. It's all been receded, but that outfield gets soaked in a hurry. So Willis at 293 with a home run and nine RBI, and as soon as the mouse gets in the right spot, We'll get going. The pitch to Willis is a liner in the right. Hendrick will cut it off in a hurry. And the Cubs start this with a single. I don't think by the time that we get into the meat of the season that the Cubs will be contending. But if they keep winning, much like Al when he's playing his 77 Mets, you just never know. You just never know. They're off to a great start. Here's Junior Kennedy at 308. Two home runs. He's already matched his real life total and four RBI. And for the moment, we're going to ignore Willis at Wills at first. And Cone delivers. There goes Wills, and that's a dead ball. Oh, it's a ball! Rincon was so concentrated and on first that he forgot to stop on the delivery. So Wills gets second base on the ball, and Kennedy has a runner in scoring position to start things. Nobody out. No one count to Kennedy. The pitch... Here's a little number. Porter picks it up on the mud, throws it to her, her away. He threw it away. I think. Nope. He, it was a low throw. They got past Tommy Her Hernandez with the flip over back, and they got him at the at first. So Kennedy is out, but Wills goes to third. That was well described by me. So Porter picked it out of the mud. It was a low throw. Her couldn't get it. And Hernandez, being the gold glover that he is, backed up the throw so they could get the slower Kennedy. So one out, runner on third for Buckner. Bill at 327, four home runs and 16 RBI. Rincon's pitch, and there's a base hit in the right. Wills will score. And after all that, the Cubs get a leadoff run. So Wills essentially drew the ball because Rincon was paying too much attention to the runner at first that he forgot to stop and then Wills took third on the bad throw by Porter and Aaron was not charged because there was an out and now Buckner singles in Wills so that's why speed kills and that's why the Cardinals would be so efficient with it as the 80s went on Keith Moreland at 244 four homers and 14 RBI and, yep, another silent movie for Clinton Parks. Here's the pitch. Moreland, fly ball, shallow center. Lonnie's there. Smith makes the catch for the out. Two out, top the first. And the ball, Leon Durham, 312, nine home runs and 93 at bats, along with 22 RBI. One nothing Cubs, just the start of things here from a soggy Bush Stadium. Wednesday night baseball. In prime time tomorrow, Kansas City and Milwaukee, both teams looking to find first place. And then on our Thursday noon game will be a Saturday matinee between the Chicago White Sox and Detroit Tigers from Tiger Stadium. Pitch to Durham is ball four. So Rincon is not off to a strong start. The pitch was high and away. And they'll bring up, no, it's Gary Woods. Okay. Gary at 323 with 6 RBI. Two out, two on. Just the start of things. McGee makes his debut May 10th against the Reds. And so whatever the Cardinals can do between now and the next five days is only going to help them. They took the first two in the daylight here at Bush in the, during the week. That is strange. Pitch to Woods. There's a ground ball base hit left side. Buckner will score. Durham goes to third. And the Cubs have two on the board early. Thank you, Mr. Dobriski, for that. Steve Henderson at 155. A home run and eight RBI. Durham on third. Woods on first. A rough start for Rincon. 
when it really are a 473. Pitch to Henderson. Ground ball to Overtville. Only place to Hernandez on the bang banger. And they got him. It was in time. Two runs, three hits, and no errors. And so the Cardinals start with a hill to climb in Chicago, too. St. Louis, nothing. And so it's Doug Bird, who is not the word for Chicago this year. He is 3 and 1. This is his seventh start. Has a 4 4 6 ERA. In his last time out on April 30th, he had a no decision against the Braves. Five in the third innings. Seven hits, three runs all earned. And he walked two and struck out three. On the year, 38 in the third innings, 47 hits, including five home runs. He has walked eight and struck out 13. He started 3-0. and oh. But when you play the Mets, that's easy to do. His loss came to Pittsburgh. In his lone start against the Cardinals about three weeks ago, seven innings, eight hits, a win. And three runs, walked two, and struck out one. He will face Lonnie Smith to lead off. A rare chance for Ozzy Smith to hit second for St. Louis. Keith Hernandez will bat third. George Hendrick will clean up. Or will bat fifth. If you like lefty hitting, here's three straight. Or Porter behind the plate will bat sixth. Overfell, who we've yet to see in this replay. We'll bat seven. Tommy Hearn and Ozzy Smith have kind of flipped spots in the lineup. Hearn will bat eighth, and Rincon will bat ninth. We got some sort of lag. Al doing this at work. He'll check in when he can. Al play game three of his Pirates Braves What If series: the '57 Pirates and the '90 Braves. I don't know who won. I know who won the first two games. How you doing, Rob? So defensively for the Cubs, it'll be Steve Henderson, a six and left. Gary Woods, a six and a six in center. Durham, a four and a nine in right. I can't tell you what Moreland is because he's coming, playing, they're playing for the bunt. Junior Kennedy, a five at short. Maury Wills, a five, uh, Maury. Bump Wills. A five at second. If Maury was a five anywhere in 1982, that would be remarkable. And Buckner a seven at first, with Jody Davis a five and a six behind the plate. Ronnie at 301, two homers and 14 RBI. He's not going to bunt. And the pitch to Ronnie is right down the right field line. Extra bases. He's going for third and will get in there in a stand up triple between the wet field and Durham's range. And Smith's speed, there was no chance of it that being anything but a triple. And so the Cardinals start with a runner in scoring position. Moreland, by the way, is a four at third. And here's the Wizard, Ozzie Smith, 247 with seven RBI. Bird delivers, and there's a base hit right side. So Ozzie is on. Bump Will should have made that play. He couldn't get there. And so the Cardinals fight back already. Keith Hernandez at 315, two home runs and 16 RBI. Ozzy's not going anywhere, but the threat of it, him running will be in the Cubs' mind. Bird delivers, and Hernandez hits his foul ball, fly ball to shallow right center. Woods is there for the first out. So 2-1 Chicago here in the first. And here's the power threat for the Cardinals. George Hendrick, who, yes, is not only in the Cardinals' uniform now, but is wearing a hat with a logo. Something you'd never see with him at the plate. 188, 5 homers, and 12 RBI. Shh. Clint is watching a silent movie. Pitch to Hendrick. Ball four. And so this is the start that St. Louis wanted off a of bird. A 3-0 curve that was low and outside. So Dane Org is at 311 on the year with 11 RBI. Porter on deck, one out, two to one Cubs. Here's the pitch, and Org slaps this one in the right center. Ozzy's going to score. Hendrick holds it third, and Org has himself a double, and it's now two to two. So the Cubs thought they were soft smarting everybody. Now have now it's a tie game. 
I don't know why this is. Is this lagging? No. So Daryl Porter is the batter. He's a 250. Four home runs and 16 RBI. So Hendrick on third, Org on second, and the Cardinals raising hay here in the first. We're tied at two. Here's the pitch. Porter, ground ball, left side base hit. Hendrick will score. Org will hold on that 48% chance, and so the Cardinals move ahead 3-2, to two, and there's only one out. And so Doug Bird's ERA has jumped seven-tenths of a run in the first inning. Here's Ken Obergfell, 389, no home runs and five RBI. Pitch from Bird, ground ball, base hit right side. Org will score to make it 4-2. to two. What did they say about the hill to climb? Well, they obviously found their 4x4, four four, probably a Subaru Brat or something like that from 1982, and not only had climbed the mountain, but stacked those Jenga blocks up so the Cubs are already now down to. Here's Tommy Herr, 253, with 7 RBI. Runners on first and third. Obert fell at first. Org at third. A Porter at third. And there's a little runner that's going to get into left center. Porter will score. And so it's runners on first and second one out for Rincon, who is 0 for 10 on the year with nine strikeouts. He can't bunt. Cubs are playing for it, and he'll try it. It's down. Bird goes to second to, to get her. Kennedy on the play, so it's a fielder's choice. 1-6. The sack fails, and there's two out for Lonnie Smith. So Doug Bird has faced nine batters and only retired two. Six hits, including a leadoff triple to Lonnie Smith in his first 25 pitches. So Bird delivers, and there's a liner right to Moreland at third, and that's finally the inning. But the Cardinals get five runs on six hits and no errors. After one, it's St. Louis five, Chicago two. What a crazy inning that was. So it'll be Jody Davis, Doug Bird, and Bump Will to face Rincon here. And now, you know, we've had a bunch of pitchers duels on this replay. I don't think we're getting that today, boys and girls. Jody is at 222, a home run, four RBI. Rincon's pitch, there's a line of the left that's going to get all the way to the wall. Overfell was late on the dive and now hugged the line, and Davis is on with a double. And so in comes Overfell and Hernandez to play the bunt. Doug Bird can hit. He's 4 for 16. He's got a double and 2 RBI, but his job is to lay one down here. Rincon's pitch, and there's a run right to Porter. Throws over to her, covering, and the sacrifice works. Score it 1-4, and Davis is on third with one out for Bump Wills. Rincon has not pitched much better than Bird. He's retired four batters out of his first nine. Four hits, an award, two earned runs. Two runs, four hits, and no errors for Chicago. They've stranded two so far. St. Louis, five runs on six hits and no errors. And they left two on. One out, top of second. Pitch to Wills, and that's going to be up the middle base hit. So no one's retiring anybody, and it's now 5-3. to three. Wills on first. Junior Kennedy sacrificed Bunt in the first. He's 0-1. for 1. Well, He's 0-0. for 0. Rincon's throw to first. Wills is... Oh, not only is he back, he's gone. So Whitey wants to pitch out. And there goes Wills. The throw down to her is not in time. And that's the 15th steal for Bump Wills. He has his dad's speed. No question about it. And Maury. He just couldn't really get on base on a regular basis. So again, Junior Kennedy has a runner in scoring position. One out, top to second. Here's the pitch. Got him. 
He swung on and missed in a 1-2 off-speed pitch. And that's Rincon's first strikeout. Two out for Buckner, who singled, drove in a run, and scored himself. Oop. Uh-oh. Yeah, I got it. Okay, hold on. I trust Michael with the links. And so Michael was kind enough to post the real box score from this game. I can't imagine. I'll have to look later. I can't imagine the Cubs came into this game at 14 and 11. So here's Bruckner. One for, I already gave you that. I already told you that. Wills leads off second. The pitch gets away from Porter. And Wills goes to third. So this is not going to be a night that Andy, or an afternoon Andy Rincon is going to remember. And so Wills is on third. Buckner at the plate. Full count. Three and two. He's worked it full. Fly ball left center. Back goes Org. And he makes the catch to retire the side. We're going to have a pesky one, I think, here this afternoon, guys. One run, two hit, no errors. After an inning and a half, it's the Cardinals five, the Cubs three. So it's Ozzie Smith, Keith Hernandez, and George Hendrick. And so Ozzie's one for one. He is singled and scored and drove in Lonnie Smith, who's tripled his first time up. 5-3, Cardinals. Here's the pitch, and there's a base hit left center. Ozzie's going to round first. Moreland was supposed to make that stop. He's not a good third baseman. It was drilled, and Moreland couldn't get the glove out. So that's a seventh hit for St. Louis. Hernandez is 0 for 1. He's sitting on a 13-game hitting streak. If we go like this, you'll have plenty of chances to bring that on. Flew out to Woods in the first. Bird delivers, and there's a base hit left field. Moreland again can't make the play. Ozzie's going to try to, Ozzie will round third. Hernandez has a double. He's going to try for third. Kennedy throws home, and Ozzie beat the tag. So it's six to three. Again, Davis got the tag in, but Ozzie's hand was already sliding across home plate. And it's six to three, and there's still nobody out here in the second. So Doug Bird, his ERA is now up a full run and change. So Hernandez is at third. He goes to third on the throw home. It's a double. And now I'll bring up Hendrick, who walked and scored his first time up. Bird's pitch. There's a fly ball right center. Durham. Has it. Hernandez will tag and score without a throw. And so it's seven to three. The Cardinals lead the Bears. Dane Ord doubled, drove in a run, and scored his first time up. Doug Bird. He's getting basted out here. His ERA right now for the game is 47 and a quarter. If that was IBM, you'd buy that in a minute, but not with a pitcher. Pitch to Ord. Ground ball to Kennedy at short, makes a diving stop on the wet turf, throws from his knees, and gets Buckner. And that'll do it. Lee Elia will come out and make the pitching change. Dan Larson's coming in. We got ourselves a pitching change. This game is coming to you from Bush Stadium in St. Louis on Retro Sports Network. And so the book on Dan Larson isn't much better than the one on Doug Bird. This is his first relief appearance. He's made, well, one, two, three, four, yeah, five starts. And so his first appearance out of the pen, he's 0-2 at the 6-4-5 ERA. In his last start against the Braves, he was hammered. Three and two-thirds innings, six hits, seven runs, six earns. He walked three and struck out two. Not surprisingly, that earned him a loss. He's allowed three home runs in 22 and a third innings. 32 hits, 17 runs, 16 of those earned. He has walked nine and struck out 13. And so for the message for those watching on WGN, you're in for a long afternoon. 7-3 Cardinals, two outs, bottom of the second. 
And here's Daryl Porter. Daryl is singled his first time up, has an RBI and a run scored. Porter strikes out. So a 2-2 pitch in at the knees, and that retires the side. Two runs, two hits, and no errors. After two, it's St. Louis 7, Chicago 3. So it'll be Keith Moreland, Leon Derman, Gary Woods. Keith is 0, is 0 for 1. Three runs on five hits for the Cubs. Cardinals, seven runs on eight hits. Only Hendrick and Rincon don't have a hit for St. Louis. And, but Hendricks reached. He has scored and driven in a run. Pitch to Moreland. Foul tipped. Two and two the count. Rincon at 62 pitches. So this will be a bullpen affair for St. Louis pretty soon. Moreland ground ball to her over to Hernandez. And this one actually starts with an out. I think we've had more offense in the first two innings of this game than we did all last week in our three. Durham walked his first time up. The right fielder hitting 312, which is his real number. And an eight-game hitting streak. Oh, yeah, and baseball demos is right. This is on the turf, and the Cardinals just have so much speed. And Clinton is right. Cubs were 8 and 17 coming in. Well, that makes a lot more sense than uh, 14 and 11. Pitch to Durham is a fly ball to center. Back goes Smith, and he, uh, and he can't make the play. He lost it out there. He's not a great center fielder, and that's a two base error. So that's not what the count in the Cardinals needed. They needed a shutdown in. They aren't going to get it. Here's Gary Woods. He singled his first time up. Cards were 17 and 9 coming in. So that's only one game difference between the real life Cardinals and these Cardinals. They're going to battle with Montreal, Philly, and probably Pittsburgh all the way through the year. I mean, none of these four divisional races are what you would say blowouts. Everything's coming down to September, we hope. Woods draws ball four. Not what when Kyle 3-1 pitch was inside, and that will bring up Steve Henderson, who's 0 for 1. So the Cubs have runners on first and second. And one out here in the third. And Cone delivers. And Henderson, chopper to Ozzie. To her for one. To Hernandez. And they got him. Call it two. No runs, no hits, no errors. Finally, a bagel up on the board for somebody after two and a half. St. Louis seven, Chicago three. This is the year that the... Well, Clinton can't hear me. I could mind the answer, but that would be pretty mean of me. Yep, this is the year that the Harvey Wallbangers lost in seven to St. Louis. But if Clinton remembers, and I want and I'll see if he types this in, he was not the manager of the of the Brewers once when the season started. It was somebody else. Can you without looking, Mr. Dobrisky, can you name the opening manager for the Milwaukee Brewers in nineteen eighty two? Well I'll have them tomorrow night in prime time, by the way. By the way against the Kansas City Royals from Milwaukee. Obert fell is at one for one. He is singled and driven in a run. 7-3 St. Louis, bottom of the third. Larson in relief, walked him. So the full count was at the shoulders and inside. That was high and tied all the way. And here's Tommy Hur. Singled an RBI for her, his first time up. Larson's pitch, ball four. Well, it's going to be one of these games It's going to be a football game. That full count was just outside, and Johnny Davis says something to the home plate umpire, and the advice is just throw, you do your job, I'll do mine. So they're coming in to play the bunt, and when Khan will do it, right down to Davis, foul. So it's 0-2. So he'll swing, and he strikes out. So that's fine. Rincon was looking for the downs, and all he found was a bunch of spent tickets. So one out for Lonnie Smith, who was one for two. He has tripled and scored. That's how the game started. 
The rain has lessened a bit. It's now a light rain, but it's warm. It's 80 degrees. It's muggy. And that turf is sopping wet. Even the infield part in what you would call those sliding pits are more of a mosh pit. Hobart fell on second, her on first. Larson delivers, and Smith ground ball up the middle. Wills only play is to first. Buckner on the bag, and they got him. You got to wait. Sometimes it's tricky. So Obert fell on third, her on second for Ozzie Smith. He has scored twice and singled twice and drove in his eighth run in the first. How you doing, sports time machine? Two on, two out, and Ozzie draws ball four. So the 3-1 was away, and that'll bring up Keith Hernandez with the bases loaded. One for two, single scored and doubled. So over fell on third, her on second, Ozzy on first. Dan Larson in, it, in relief is living on a prayer. He's, walked, he's not allowed to hit, but he's walked the bases loaded and struck out too. Pitch to Hernandez, got him! He got a strike three call, and Larson looks to the heavens, gets some rain in his eye, and works out of the jam. No runs, no hits, no errors. After three, St. Louis seven, Chicago three. So Jody Davis, I don't know what Chicago's going to do with Larson, and Bump Wills to face Rincon here in the fourth. And then Khan starts the fourth with 80 pitches on his arm. Davis doubled and scored. 7-3 Cubs. I mean Cardinals. Pitch to Davis. Fly ball to left. Org. One out. Then Khan would pay out of his pocket for a clearing at this point. And I think Woody Herzog would too. If Larson bats, he's one for six on the year with three strikeouts. He will bat, and he grounds this one, and the, lines that one to the seats, left side, two and two. And Collins pitch, he lost him. He walked the pitcher. Low and away on a full count. That's Rincon's 18th walk in 31 innings. He walked 25 in the real year, so control is going to be an issue, but you never want to walk the pitcher. Boy vey. So through three and a third innings, Rincon now has faced 18 batters, five hits, no three runs all earned. He has walked three and struck out one. Bump Wills is two for two. He has stolen a base, his 15th. Single twice, scored and drove in a run. 7-3 Cardinals. Here's the pitch. Up the middle past her. That's a base hit. Larson will hold at second. And our T-ball exhibition continues now with Junior Kennedy. He is 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Buck Rogers, yep. Bamberger was with the Mets. Bamberger replaced Tory with the Mets. What did you have for breakfast this morning, Ron? I actually had a waffle. What about yesterday? I'm not sure. But yep, George Bamberger was with the Mets. So Kennedy at the plate, Larson the pitcher on second with the jacket on on an 80 degree day, and Wills raring to go at first. Rincon delivers, and Kennedy chops this one past her. That's a single. Larson will hold it. Well, I'm not sure what's going on here. Wills goes back to second, and everybody's safe. Wills got too far past second. Ozzy's got a good arm. But Wills has good speed, and he slides back in there. So there's one out. The bases are loaded for Bruckner. And Whitey's going to the pen. Now, who could he use? He needs a long reliever, and it's going to be Dave the Point. So the lefty against the lefty, the point. Is 0 for 1 on the year. Everything he's done right now has been out of the pen. This is his sixth appearance. His last game was April 20th. He hasn't pitched in a while. That was against the Pirates. Two innings, two hits. He allowed a run and struck out two. So on the year, he's 0 and 1 with an ERA of 6. Five hits, four runs all earned. He has walked five and struck out seven. 
and allowed a home run. For some reason, Jim Cott is having endurance problems and doesn't have good stuff, which is why we didn't go with him. LaPointe would start 20-some-odd games, so we got to be close to the point where he is in the rotation. And, as a bonus, from Glens Falls, New York, the hometown of Retro Sports Network. So Buckner one for two. Run scored. He has a single in RBI and bases full of cubbies. Pitch from LaPointe. Buckner ground ball to Hernandez. They're going to try for two. To the Wizard for one. And no throw. No throw. So Larson will score at seven to four. There's now two out. And Buckner's on third with Wills, the speedster, on third for Moreland. And so Keith is 0 for 2. Very rare in the 19, early 1980s games, game are both starters gone by the fourth inning. The point delivers, and Moreland puts this one in the left center. Wills will score. Buckner holds at third, and Moreland should have had a double out of that. He holds with a single at 7-5, and here's Leon Durham, who is 0 for 1 with a walk. LaPointe delivers, and there's a ground ball to her, over to Hernandez, and the inning is finally over. But the Cubs have made some noise. Two runs on three hits and no errors. After three and a half, it's St. Louis 7, Chicago 5. And so here's a rare case, as I said, where both starters are gone. And if you take a quick look at that, you understand why. Doug Bird, an inning and two-thirds, eight hits, seven runs, all earned. He walked one through 39 pitches and pitched like, well, what a bird does, poop. Like a seagull on a beach, plop. Rincon only went three and a third inning, seven hits, five runs, all earned. He walked three and struck out one in 107 pitches. Didn't pitch much better than Bird. Again, a seagull watching over you while you get some coffee. So Rincon, because he did not go five, can't win it. Bird can lose it, but Rincon can't win it. And so as we start the bottom of the fourth, it's George Hendrick, Oregon Porter. Hendrick, the lone car uh, cardinal position player not to have a base hit. He has walked single, a walk, scored and driven in a run. Larson delivers and Hendrick up the middle. Woods makes the catch one out. That's what scouting reports are for and Woods was in the right spot. Here's Dane Org. He's one for two with a double. A run scored and an RBI. The pitch. There's a base hit left side. Henderson corrals it. And Org is on. 7 5, ninth hit for the Cardinals. Porter, 1 for 2. He is singled, scored, struck out, and driven in a run. Org not a threat to steal, but Porter's going to take first. So Larson again has put two on with one out for Obertville. First, Larson's allowed one hit. Ken is, has singled and walked and driven in a run. Let's see. 62 degrees here on day game. Let's see. All the wrestling. Dave Don't La Point. Very good baseball demos. Cubs pitcher wanted dead or alive. There you go. I like that. And I think you have the U.S. champion right here in the group. <laughs> I, I'm. <laughs> I think you're talking about the wrestling. I've been kind of busy. I haven't been able to watch the chat. I love the Bon Jovi references, though. But I think if you're doing early 80s stuff, I would think Quiet Riot would be more appropriate, wouldn't it? Pitch to Obergfell. There's a liner in the left that's going to fall. Org will round third and hold. And so they're loaded for Tommy Herr. Porter on second, Obert fell on first, and Borg, I believe, is on third. 
So Davis and Larson have a chat. What? And the crowd doesn't like that. And her gets punked. He gets Homer Simpson and drives in a run. So it's now eight to five. Unbelievable, and there's still only one out. This is going to be one of these 25-22 games, but we're in St. Louis, not Chicago. Clinton is going to do some MP3 this week. I like MP3. i got to talk to um, get my licenses transferred over. Got to catch up. That's a fun game, and that's a, very, that's a pure cards and dice game. So LaPointe, by the way, has not batted this year. Not a good hitter. You're not going to bunt with the bases loaded one out. So take your strikeout and move the line along. If you make contact, that's great. Larson's pitch, LaPointe, and he kind of pops out one into Buckner. And so that'll do it. With the score 8 to 5, we got ourselves another pitching change. Former Red Sox Allen Ripley's coming on for Larson again. This game is coming to you from Bush Stadium in St. Louis. The score is St. Louis 8, Chicago 5. And since you're all doing nicknames, Alan Ripley, believe it or not, is coming in. This is his eighth appearance of the year. He actually pitched in, this, uh, in the opener on Monday. He threw two scoreless innings. Allowed a hit and struck out one. Twelve and two-thirds innings on a year. Thirteen hits, two home runs. Seven runs, six earned. He's walked two and struck out five and gets no has no record. And so it's Porter on third, Overfill on second, Her on first, two out, Ronnie Smith at the plate. Lines one for three. He has it let off again with a triple and a run scored. Here's the pitch, and that's up the middle for a base hit. Porter scores. Here comes Albert Fell. Wood throws in the infield, and it's 10 to 5. So a two run single for Lonnie Smith has turned this into a Woolworth game. We got a five and dimer going on here. And here's Ozzie Smith. Ozzie is two for two. He single twice, scored twice, walked once, and drove in a run. Pitch to the Wizard. That's a base hit right side. Her will score. Lonnie Smith will hold it third. And as Mark Forsberg says in the chat, I think the pitchers got some bad medicine. Oh, did they ever. I, got, I don't remember much from Glens Falls. I was born there, but never lived there. Michael, where are you from? And so I was going back to work to listen. Sure he is. That's awesome. Yep, born in Glens Falls in 1971. The day after Thanksgiving, as a matter of fact. My wife said I've been to Turkey for years. Hernandez is one for three. He has a double, an RBI, and a run scored, and a strikeout. 11-5, bottom of the fourth. Here's the pitch, and there's a fly ball to right. Durham makes the catch, and this inning is finally over. Four runs on four hits. No errors. After four, it's St. Louis 11, Chicago 5. And so Dave LaPointe will face Gary Wood, Steve Henderson, and Jody Davis, and I'm not sure what they're going to do with Ripley if someone should reach. Gary Woods is one for one. He has an RBI single and a walk. LaPointe delivers, and there's a base hit down the line and right. Woods is going for two, and he's going to get in there safe. He slides in the mud. Hendricks' arm is okay, but Woods had to double off the crack of the bat. Right down that line there, the warning track at Bush is not dirt. It's kind of a quirky surface that doesn't absorb much more water that doesn't really absorb any water it's different from the turf but it's not the dirt you would find uh, in, on a grass field either Henderson the batter Steve is 0 for 2 he's grounded into a double play the points pitch Henderson hits a base hit into left center Woods will round third and score this game might be not done until we get to tomorrow night's game I gotta do a show tomorrow afternoon with Mr. 
Dave died there. Yep. <laughs> Slippery when wet. How much of a delay is this game on? I'm seeing up there that Dave LaPointe is batting. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, no one's complaining about it, so we'll let it be. I know that ruins the vibe of the show. So, Johnny Davis is one for two. He's doubled and scored. Henderson on first. Nobody out. Top the fifth. The points pitch. There's a liner foul. Third base side. So, it's one ball and two strikes to Davis. And the point delivers, and he lost him. Well, there are days that you have one nothing games, and there are days that they let our Red Sox fan and I pitch batting practice. And that is today. Alan Ripley is 0 for 1 on the year. There, if you want to bunt, go right ahead. I don't know what the Cubs are going to do. He's going to bat. He's going to bunt. Porter lets it roll foul, or Hernandez does. And it's no balls and two strikes. Nobody out. Cubs already have a run in here in the fifth. The points pitch. Got him. A late called strike three, and there's finally one out. For Bump Wills, who has singled three times. He has stolen a base, scored twice, and drove in one. Pitch from LaPointe. There's a base hit left center. Henderson will round third and will run on Org. The throw is coming in, but it won't be in time. In fact, it's hot. it got away from Porter. Davis goes to third. Wills goes to second. And so Charge Org with an error and left. E7. And as soon as you think the Cardinals are pulling away, back come the Cubs. It's now 11-8. With one out. Junior Kennedy at the plate. I lost my mouse. There we go. Kennedy one for two with a strikeout. First base open. The point, no, there's no one on third. Kennedy, ground ball to Smith, over to Hernandez, and finally we have two outs. Eight runs, 11 hits, no errors. Six left on by the Cubs. Wills would be seven if he can't score. The Cardinals, 11 runs on 12 hits and two errors. And they've stranded seven. Here's Buckner. Bill was one for three. Driven in two, scored one. The points pitch, and that gets away from Porter. And so Wills goes to third on the wild pitch. The 1-0 pitch was in the mud and skipped away. Here we go. There's a fly ball to right center. Back goes Lonnie. That's off the wall. Wills scores. Bruckner round second, going for third. The throw is not in time, and Bruckner gets that blue uniform full of mud. 11-9. You sure we're not playing this one in Chicago? So here's Keith Moreland, one for three with an RBI. LaPointe delivers. Base hit in the left center. Bruckner scores. It's 11 to 10. So LaPointe is allowed five runs. Here's Durham. He's 0 for 2. The Cardinals' pen is spent. They really needed LaPointe to eat innings. Instead, he's eating a lot of baseballs. Pitch to Durham. Got him. An 0-2 pitch. Swung on and missed. The Cubs get five runs on five hits and one air. And we're only halfway home. It's the Cardinals' 11. The Cubs' 10. And Michael Dabrowski's got all right. This type of pitching will make a manager bang. Oh, bang his head. Uh, come on, Michael, and feel the noise. Batters, rock your boys. Get wild, wild, wild. It'll be Hendrick Oregon Porter. As we start the bottom of the fifth, we've already taken 49 minutes to play four and a half innings. So Alan Ripley, who will do up fourth on this and the sixth takes the hill. Hendrick is the only cardinal not to have a hit. Hendrick and Durham are the only players for either team not to have a hit. For a position player anyway. 
Speaking of Hendrick, that's a ground ball base hit. So now it comes down to J Leon Durham. Hendrick leads off the inning with a single. And here's Zorg. He's two for three. He has single, doubled, scored twice, and driven in a run. Ripley's pitch is a balk. There's no pitch. He balked on a 3-1 count. And Lee Elia is beside himself in the dugout. I'd show you the replay. It won't do you any good. But I'm pretty sure he blocked there. 82 degrees. The wind is blowing in from right center field at a horrific one mile an hour. It is just sticky, muggy, rainy, nasty weather. The 3-1 to Org is a base hit left center. Hendrick will score. And it's now 12-10. So that's the first earned run for Ripley. It's gonna take, we're probably not going to do a proper recap. It would take an hour to do. So here's Porter. Darrell is one for two. He is singled, scored twice, walked, struck out, and dri drove in a run. And Davis goes out and chats with Ripley. And Porter hits this one in the left center for a base hit. Or it will hold at second. And there's nobody out here in the bottom of the fifth for o Obertfeld, who is two for two. He is single twice, scored once, walked once, and drove in a run. And now it gets away from Davis again. So the runners move up 90, and this time Davis couldn't handle it. It's a pass ball and a 3-0 count to Obertfeld. Oh my goodness. You're from, oh, absolutely. Um... Rochester, but you won the 92 high school title. That is such a great facility, the Glens Falls Civic Center. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, Dave Arena. 11-10. Is Al playing defense? We love you, Al. They're going to rock and roll all night and party every day. It's a beautiful area. Between... Albany and Lake George, of course, is beautiful north of Lake George. There's just more bears than people. But, yeah, so runners on second and third, nobody out. Here's Obertfell. Pitch from Ripley. Ball four. Well, I'm not sure how many walks we've had in this game. We've had 28 hits and 22 runs. And so they're loaded for her, who is one for two. He has driven into. He has scored once and walked once. And even if the Cardinals get up five, ten again, five runs again, the Cubs have chipped this one off. We've only had one inning where there hasn't been any runs. Here's the pitch. Her line drive, base hit, right field. Lord Porter will score. Overfill holds at third. Allen Ripley's day is done. In comes Bill Campbell, and the score is now fourteen to ten. The Cardinals get the touchdown. The Bears are sitting on a field goal. And so Bill Campbell, a 3.75 ERA, 1-1 one one with a save, 12 innings, 13 hits, a home run allowed. I'm not going to find out his last game. This game's gone on long enough. He has walked two and struck out seven. And he was an effective reliever for the Cubs after his days with the Red Sox were done. And so Dave LaPointe, of course, is going to bat. There's nobody out. You can't bunt. He's got a swing. Oh, for one. And there's a base hit right center. Obertfell will score. Her will hold. It's 15 to 10. And we're only in the fifth. We've secret, secretly replaced our major league pitchers with those in the Little League World Series. Let's see if anyone notices. And so here comes Lonnie Smith, who is two for four. He is single, triple, driven into, scored once. LaPointe, the pitcher on first, a runner on third. The Cardinals have scored four here, and there's still nobody out in the bottom of the fifth. Here's the pitch, and there still isn't anybody out. Single to right. Her will score. LaPointe to third. And it's 16 to 10. The Cubs are going to play for the bunt. Are you kidding me? Here's Ozzie Smith. He is three for three. He has singled three times. He has walked 
He has scored twice and he has driven in two. And so all the games, those one nothing, two one games that you guys loved, the computer's getting back at you for this. Campbell delivers, and there's a ground ball to Wills, who's going to throw to fur or try for two. They're not going to get him. The point will score. Lonnie Smith is out going to second. And it's 17 to 10, St. Louis. They put a six spot on the board, and there's finally one out. So Hernandez is one for four. Double, RBI, run scored, and a strikeout. Pitch from Campbell. Got him! A 2-2, two -two, swung on and missed for strike three. So here's Hendrick. George is one for two. He's a single, score twice, walk, and has an RBI. Campbell's pitch. Got him! The side is finally down, but the Cardinals score six runs on six hits and no errors. After five, the Cardinals 17, the Bears 10. Yep. Oh, I love it. Baseball demos. Yeah, Mark Forsberg, first to 20 wins. After all the demos, D. Snyder says we're not going to take it anymore. I don't know what you're going to need for the rest of this game. Whether you're going to need the Cardinals' official scorecard because you've run out of room on the first, or a circus magazine. So you can just do the headbangers ball thing. As we approach 1 o'clock, we've already been at this for 56 minutes, and we're just starting the sixth inning. There have been 31 hits in this game. I got to know, there have been 41 base runners. The Cubs have allowed six walks, the Cardinals four. So 27 of the 41 base runners have scored. So Gary Woods is two for two. LaPointe stays on. Because there's no reason for him not to. Woods, two for two, a single double RBI, and a run scored in a walk. Here's the pitch. Woods strikes out. I caught the inside corner on the 2 2, and here's Steve Henderson. He's one for three. Got it into a double play. Drove in a run and, sc and scored one himself. LaPointe delivers, and there's a liner past her, another single. We've not had a 1-2-3 inning in this game. Since the fourth inning, the score is 10-7 St. Louis. That's just in the last two innings. With Jody Davis, Jody is one for two. He has scored twice, walked once, and doubled. Porter goes out to talk with LaPointe, and the pitch to Davis is a base hit opposite field left side. Henderson will hold at second. Davis is on at first. And I don't know what you do with Bill Campbell. Do you blunt him? One out, top to six. Cubs down 17 to 10, but it feels like this game isn't even close to over. And Hector Cruz will come in for Campbell. Hector is 0 for 1 on the year. 4 for 19 in the real season. The point delivers. There's a ground ball to her. There's the Wizard for one over to Hernandez. And my goodness, we actually had a half inning when no one scored. No runs, two hits, and no errors. After five and a half, it's the Cardinals 17, the Cubs 10. And Dick Tidro, love that mustache. Fu Manchu, right now the Warren Brewster School of Intimidation comes in. He's 2-0 and on the year. This is his 13th appearance all out of the pen. He went two-thirds of an inning against Atlanta his last time out and struck out one. 18 and two-thirds. 18 and a third innings, 12 hits, three runs, all earned. One home run. He's walked three and struck out 15. Supposedly he'll get to 55 pitches, and if he does that cleanly, we might actually get through some game here. Pitch to Dan Orgas, three for four. Liner right to Moreland for the first out. Daryl Porter is two for three. Single twice, scored three times, walking a strikeout. 
And Robin is 17th. Pitch from Tidrow. Ground ball to third. Moreland, the Bucker. Two out. I'm not sure we've had a 1 2 3 inning in this game. Ken Obertfell is 2 for 2. He has single twice, scored twice, walked twice, and driven in one. The pitch. And a line drive to Kennedy, and how about that? No runs, no hits, and no errors. We played six. It's still 17-10 St. Louis. Yeah, Soup was still pitching in 82. <laughs> it feels like it, Dave. And Clinton, yeah, I, this is slow pitch, T-ball, whatever. Yes, the game before was a 2-1 game. Uh, Andahar lost on a, I mean, uh, Fergie Jenkins lost on the wrong side of a 1-0 game or something like that. I was, Dabrowski talking about his basketball experience. I was the sixth man, a guy, the sixth man, a guy named John Wallace carried the same one to start every single game of a four-year career at Syracuse. That's very cool. Yep, Super still playing in 82. Al played a game last the other night offline, the 77 Yankees against the Red Sox, 21-17. So, yeah, so I'm getting that kind of game. And Mark Forsberg is right. You get a crazy game every once in a while, and by God, this is it. So Bump Wills comes to the plate. He's 4 for 4. He's scored three times and driven in three. The point starting his third inning. And there's a ground ball up the middle. Ozzy over to Hernandez. One out. The point, if you can get through the inning, would bat second in the bottom of the seventh. And there'll be a pinch hitter there. Junior Kennedy is one for three with a strikeout. Has a single as well. And LaPointe gets him on a 2-2 pitch on the outside corner. LaPointe actually has struck out four. He's allowed eight hits, but he struck out four. He's given up five earned runs. This is called taking one for the team. Bill Buckner is two for four. He is single, tripled, driven in three, scored two. The pitch, ball four. So another walk. And so the 3-1 was low and away from Moreland. And Moreland is two for four. He is single twice and driven in two. LaPointe delivers. Moreland up the middle. Ozzy over to Hernandez. And they got him. Well, technically it's her, but it's an out either way. No runs, no hits, no errors. Finally, it's time to stretch in St. Louis. You see the Clydesdales running across the outfield. Can't imagine any undue droppings are going to mix well on that wet stuff out there. 17-10 Cardinals. And so Dick Trid Tidrow will face Tommy Herr, who has driven in four. He is two for two. He is single, double, scored, or walked once, scored twice, and driven in four. I feel like I'm giving industrial or wood shop instructions here. Measure twice and cut once. Pitch from Tidrow and her lines one to Wills. One out. And so the Cardinals will go to their bench. Let's see. Does it really matter who I bring in? It really doesn't. Steve Braun will come in. Braun is 5 for 20 on the year. 250 average. No home runs or RBI, and if you can't get one in RBI today, then I don't know what to tell you. Only Leon Durham and Junior Kennedy don't have an RBI. 17 to 10, 10 runs, 15 hits, no errors, and it could be worse. The Cubs have stranded nine. Cardinals, 17 runs on 18 hits, two errors, and they've stranded eight so far. Tidrow's pitch. Strike three. Full count. And the home plate umpire is getting soaked. He just wants to go home. 82 degrees, a wind of one out to right center or in from right center. And it has rained the entire game, but not heavy enough to delay it. That would just be kind of insult to injury here. Lonnie Smith is three for five. He is two singles, a triple, driven in three with a run scored. Tidrow's pitch, and there's a ground ball to Wills over to Buckner. And maybe the fireworks machine is out of bullets. 
after seven. No runs, no hits, no errors. Leon Durham is still sitting on an in-game hitting streak. New pitcher coming on for St. Louis at 17-10 cards. And so who it'll be, well, it's not going to be Bruce Suter. He's pitched the last five days. And so Doug Bear comes in, and one of these, why am I pitching in this type of situation? 3-0 and on the year with two saves, an ERA of 1-8-0. Control has been a problem. Over 10 innings, he's allowed seven hits. Walked six and struck out seven. He pitched twice on Sunday, two in, both ends of a doubleheader. Walked two and two innings in the first one against Cincinnati and only retired a batter in the second. He'll face Leon Durham, who has walked. So everybody that started this game as a position player has reached in one way or another. If Durham gets a hit, then everyone has at least one. Durham is 0 for 3 with a walk and a strikeout. Bears pitch. There's a high fly ball to left center, and Orb will handle that on the track. That looked gone off the bat, but the rain kind of held things down. Here's Gary Woods. He's 2 for 3 with a double and an RBI. Clinton Park says, you do that with the dice, too. You get a crazy game he's talking about. It makes one crazy. How does Demos put up with it and pay a pitch and replay is beyond me. You just get them. I mean, you know, all these games have random. Oh, Clinton can't hear me. But for the rest of you, all these games have random number generators. Sometimes you just get good rolls for everybody. Like those Hawaiian ones you can find in the bakery part of the store that if you butter are just absolutely... Ugh. There, that's the proper noise. Good noises, not bad noises. Gary Woods is two for three. A single, double. Driven in a run, scored a one, walked and struck out. Doug Bear, nope, we're going to get a pinch hitter. Larry Boa comes in. Good pitcher, Larry, there. 286 with nine RBI. Bear delivers, and there's a fly ball to center. Lonnie Smith is there, two out. So two outs here in the eighth. It was 17-10 after five, and after all the talk about runs scored, it died down again. Steve Henderson is two for four. Single twice, driven in a run. Crowded into a double play. I believe if um, ID Jester is feeling good, Baseball Demos is on with him tonight at eight. Tomorrow, Dave Gardner and I host What's New in the E on Dave's channel. Everything you wanted to know about the Eastern Massachusetts Roller Hockey League in the week that was in there. Find out how the Nicholas Cage teams did this Saturday. If you're in the Saugus area, and who knows? I never know. Um, full slate of action tonight in that league. And we'll talk about it tomorrow. Hopefully have a guest. Baseball tomorrow night, Kansas City and Milwaukee around 7 o'clock. And uh, hopefully it will not be another one of these 17-10 games. And Jerry Morales will pinch hit for Steve Henderson. Morales at 206 on the year with a homer and six RBI. Here's the pitch from Bear, and there's a fly ball left center. Lonnie Smith goes over a long run and makes the catch on the warning track. No runs, no hits, no errors. After seven and a half, it's 17-10 St. Louis. So Dick Tigro has thrown two clean innings. He'll face Smith or Ozzy Smith, Hernandez, and Henry. Ozzy is three for four with three RBI. Two runs and a walk. Tigro, fly ball to right. Durham, one out. Hernandez is one for five. Doubled, drove in a run and scored. He has struck out twice. Tigro's pitch, and he'll line that one foul right side. And we'll do it again. Two balls and two strikes from Tidro. Hernandez ready. And that's a ground ball to Kennedy over to Buckner. And that's an out. It will be Morales, by the way, is a one and seven in left. And Waller is a two and two in center. I don't think anyone cares at this point. 
George Hendrick is one for three on the afternoon with a run scored, two runs scored and an RBI. Strikeout and a walk. 17-10, St. Louis, bottom of the eighth, two out. Here's the pitch, and there's a base hit in the left center. Hendrick will round first and hold, and so that's the 19th Cardinals hit. Here's Dane Ord. He is three for five, two singles, a double. And we're going to pinch hit for him. Why? Because we can. And so here's Gene Tennis at 353, a homer and two RBI. Hendrick on first, two out, bottom of the eighth, 17-10 St. Louis. If you're still watching, thanks for hanging on with us here. Here's the pitch. And there's a base hit in the left. Morales will corral that. Her Hendrick goes into third. And the Cardinals are threatening again. Here's Daryl Porter, two for four, with an RBI and three runs scored. Kidro delivers, ground ball to Wills. Over to Kennedy, and that will retire the side. No runs on two hits and no errors. We go to the ninth. St. Louis 17, Chicago 10. And Tito Landrum, who's a 2 and a 5, goes in the left. It'll be Jody Davis, a pitcher... Uh, pinch hitter, and then Mump Wills to face Bear here in the top of the ninth. 20 hits for the Cardinals. 10 or 15 for the Cubs. Jody Davis, 2 for 3. With a double. A walk and two runs scored. Bears pitch, and here's our line drive to left. That Landrum will turn and watch it go. It's a home run. It is now 17 11. The Cubs. Poss could not possibly come back, right? They could not possibly get seven runs here in the night. Dan Briggs will pinch it for Dick Tidrow. He is two for seven on the year with an RBI. On the real year, he struck out nine times, went six for 48. There's pitch, and there's a ground ball up the middle. Ozzy. Comes in, a bang-banger to Hernandez, and Briggs beats it out. There's still nobody out for Bump Wills, who was 4 for 5 with 3 RBI, 3 runs scored, and a stolen base. And this one isn't quite over yet. 17-11, St. Louis, top of the ninth. Here's the pitch. There's a ground ball up the middle. Smith catches the bag for 1. No throw to Hernandez. And so there's one out. They get the lead runner, but Wills is a 98% chance of stealing second. Junior Kennedy is one for four. Singled strikeout twice. Throw to first. Wills is back. Pitch from Bear. Kennedy strikes out. He looked at an 0-2 cutter at the knees. And so it's up to Bill Buckner to extend this game. He is two for four. He is singled and tripled, driven in three, scored twice, and walked once. And so this game, which has taken probably longer than anything else I've done in a while. Yeah, more points in the Super Bowl. You're absolutely right. So here we go. Here's the ball game. Pitch to Buckner, and there's a fly ball to center. Lonnie Smith has it, and the game is over. The Cardinals outlast and outscore the Cubs 17 to 11. Well, you see how the offenses kind of lined up. There was a lot of it. 37 hits and 11 walks. So 48 base runners and 28 scored. And so there was more offense in this game than there was in the Super Bowl. Surprise, surprise, Larson and Ripley were minus pitchers. That's really all you got to say in this game. LaPointe gets the win. He did not pitch well, but he was there when the fifth ended, and they never lost the lead. So he goes to 1-1. One and one. Doug Bird falls to 3-2. and two. And the MVP is Tommy Herr, who went... Two for three with two doubles. 
Drove in four. It really could have been anybody, but he gets it. Took four hours and 28 minutes, and man, did it feel like it. Final score. 17-11 St. Louis. Okay, tomorrow, during the day on Dave Gardner's channel, we'll do the this week on the E-Baseball with you tomorrow night on Retro Sports Network. It'll be Kansas City and Milwaukee, and we hope it'll be a little more of a baseball game than instead of a football game masquerading as a baseball game. And our Thursday lunchtime game is going to be the White Sox and Tigers from Detroit from that Saturday. All right, all right. I need, Jester, if you're watching this later, hope you feel better. St. Louis and Chicago is going to be the pick all along anyway. Hope that you and Baseball Demos have fun tonight. Catch that at 8 o'clock if everyone feels okay. I'm Ron Juckett. Hit that like and subscribe if you haven't. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Until then, have yourself a good Tuesday.